So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, iPhone 12, three months later. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you my pros and cons that I've learned about this phone after three months. And I'll begin with the price that I paid for this before we get into that, 829 bucks. So yeah, that's the price of this one. And it does have a little bit of tax, so it's, it's a little bit more than that even with tax, depending on where you're at. So let me talk about the first pro of this phone right here that I discovered after three months, and that's gotta be the display of this device. Because it goes from the 11 with the LCD to the OLED, it's something that I keep noticing about this phone. It feels more like the Pro device having the Super Retina XDR OLED display on here. Of course, it's got your night shift dark mode true tone, but what's really noticeable is just having those deeper contrast colors when you are doing stuff in application. So when you pop up things with darker backgrounds, you'll see definitely it just has a much better contrast than what we've seen on prior iPhone 11 and iPhone 10 are so that's my first pro hands down the OLED display in addition if you notice when we look closely here the bezels are even thinner than before and it's something that just makes the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 12 excuse me look very sleek here on the, the body so I gotta say sleek display overall great OLED as well so the next thing I really like about this phone is that it has a very good balance size of you know just a good size screen and being pretty lightweight as well so Definitely do like that. It's pretty easy to hold compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. For example, a lot of people pick that phone, but let's be frank right here. This device right here is definitely easier to manage day to day. It's much lighter and it still has a relatively large enough screen. It's not as small as the mini and still feeling very comfortable. So a very good compromise, very good balance. And I think the size alone is one reason why this might be the best seller of the bunch in the iPhone 12 lineup. Okay, so the next thing I found the pro of this device after after three months has got to be the mobile performance with 5G. If I go ahead and click apple.com, you'll notice that things just open faster. Definitely, of course, 4G LTE to 5G, definitely gonna open up faster. But when it's really noticeable is when you're out and about and you're in some of these areas where you typically would have a slower performance on your older iPhone with 4G, this one shouldn't give you that problem. And I notice it also has better phone call reception as well. So I just like this 5G, this mobile performance. It just gives this phone a sense of longevity that you're not gonna get if you buy something like an iPhone 11 because while you know the iPhone 11 and other iPhones will be updated for a long time, this one having 5G, this goes for the other 12s as well, but having 5G can help you to hold on to this phone even longer than say if you bought Apple's 4G LTE phones in the lineup. So my next thing after three months I really noticed to be great is the performance. Now, I don't know if you've been watching the channel, but we've been pitting the iPhone 12 up against a lot of the phones out there and it's doing very well. I mean, very, very well. So this A14, just like the prior iPhones, you're gonna notice that it gives you even slicker performance than before. Now, it's not gonna be overly noticeable if you have anything like an 11 series, but I think it just gives that extra boost that's gonna, again, lead to more longevity on this device. Super amazing performance with the A14. And then when it comes to benchmarks, it really does show getting benchmark scores that are faster than most laptops. However, if you do have an M1 Mac or M1 Mac mini, you probably are gonna get something similar to this. So definitely not gonna outbeat those, but this is a super fast phone. It's insane how quick Apple has been managing to get these processors in this phone. Definitely giving these phones a longer life than you would typically expect from other devices. So super thumbs up, A14 has been remarkable. So the next pro has been battery life. I'm not overly impressed with this and I'll talk about why this can also be a con in my con section, but I'm pretty happy with the battery life for this phone seeing that it does use 5G. Now, of course, I've maintained my 100% battery health. It's only been three months, but this phone right here definitely can get around five to six hour screen time using 5G and it can get through a day. And that's really what matters considering we're moving to 5G. Uh, Apple waited a little while to get to 5G, but at least this phone is going to make it through the day. So battery life, I'm not super upset about. So I would consider it a pro because if I can get through the day on a 5G iPhone, similar to my past iPhones, I'm gonna be pretty happy about that. And so I'm happy about that here with the iPhone 12. Okay guys, so pro number six is the cameras. We have that great main camera and then we have the ultra wide, but I'm not gonna talk about this. Just go ahead and look at the samples I took with this camera. Let me know what you guys think.
And my final pro of iPhone 12 has got to be the aluminum edges. I think they stay super clean compared to the 12 Pro series, which can get scratched up smudgy with that stainless steel. While the stainless steel does feel more premium, it does come at a cost. So a cost of smudging and scratching. Now, the back of this thing or the other iPhone 12s with the glass backs can get smudgy as well, but I kind of like how on the iPhone 12 right here, this material stays cleaner by the camera. One of the areas where on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it would get really smudgy and messed up. Same on the edges. So to me, it might have a little bit of a cleaner look than even the 12 Pro series on the areas that are kind of high touch, like the sides, for example. And sometimes you accidentally will bump into the camera, whereas the back is clean on the 12 Pro, but this is easy to clean the back. The sides, though, can get smudgy real quickly and real easily. All right, well, it seems like many people want to hear the cons as well, so let's get into them. The first one, low storage. Come on, Apple, it's 2021. What is with the 64 gigabytes for 829? This is absolutely ridiculous. We should have 128 here in 2021, especially considering iPhones do not have expandable memory or anything like that. You have to pay for cloud storage. Throw 128 gig across the board standard. It's 2021. People are using this 4K HDR video you put in here. I want to see that next. Okay, so the next con. This is a con for, you know, I think iPhone 11 as well, but 5X zoom? Now, I know not everybody, you know, needs zoom, but come on, 5X? You could go at least 10X digitally. I know it's not going to be the best overall result, but Come on, 5X, not very happy with this. This is just something, it's like 829, there's phones that are cheaper than this. S20 FE, S21, they can go 30X. This thing can only go five. And while that 30X isn't amazing, 5X is hardly any reach. So terrible zoom on this phone. I do wanna see further improvements to zoom on the base 13. I know the pros should go even further, maybe 20X on those devices on the next Pro series, but this one should go farther on the next one in my opinion. Next up is the price on this phone is just too high. 829, last year the iPhone 11 was 699. That's a $129 increase just for an OLED display. No, this is just not a good price point I feel like for the iPhone 12 here. I think the Galaxy S21 is even a little bit cheaper than this. Not much, but still, I mean, this price needs to come down a little bit. 729 I think would be fair for this device. And even for the mini, that one's too high as well. I think the mini should be around, you know, 629 to 600, maybe 599 the starting price, especially considering you're throwing 64 gigs. Now, if Apple started this at 128 at 829, that makes a little more sense. But this phone to me is just too high. Overpriced, definitely. They should have came down a bit on it in terms of the price. But a lot of people aren't going to care. They're going to buy this anyway because they get promotional deals. It has a you know monthly payment plan, you know things like that. So people are still going to get it. But I'm just saying, if you're buying this phone, there are better there are better values in terms of price point than this. Number four, this notch. This thing is just nasty at this point. We've been seeing this on every phone for like four years, and it hasn't shrunk. It hasn't changed. It's just still staring at you right in the face right there yeah it does house face id and a lot of people are gonna say i don't care nobody gives a crap about that notch obviously they don't millions have bought this phone but when we're talking about innovation pushing industry forward you know every other phone out there trying to get their phones closest to they can to all screen and apple just keeps putting out this same old notch it's starting to look dated whether you want to admit it or not so definitely con number four for this phone is got to be the notch i want to see it go down a bit and the next con is Face ID. And it's not because Face ID is a terrible system or anything like that. It's perfect in terms of a face unlock, super secure, stuff like that. It's just in the COVID era right now, it's not overly useful when you got the mask on, you got to go use that archaic analog feeling, you know, pin code from the original iPhones, basically. So that's just something that I think Apple could improve on the next phone during the current times is to put a Touch ID solution. Rather, they put it in the power button or they put it underneath the display like Samsung has been doing with their Galaxy devices. So I would like to see some implementation along with Face ID of a Touch ID scanner on the next one that does come out. But in conclusion, the iPhone 12, 
you know, this phone is designed to appeal to the masses. And even though I had a handful of pros and cons, it's just one of the best overall balanced devices you can get. The price, a little bit high, but you can get it discounted depending on the carrier and whatever promotions are going on. You got it blue. You can get it in green, red, black, white. It was clearly designed to appeal to the masses, and it has been selling millions of devices, and it will continue to do so at least until the next iPhone comes out. So three months later, pretty amazing balanced device. It's There's nothing that blows me away about this phone, but there's nothing that really super disappoints me either, and it's a very easy phone to rock day to day. Let me know your thoughts about the iPhone 12. If you've had one for a couple months, let people know. Are you planning on trading? Did you already trade to the S21 because you can't stay on one phone too long? Let us know down below in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.